Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Gift Sense 92. Give you guys the latest and exclusive content on new music entertainment news and inspirational quotes by me. The Queen's back at it again as always. Um, so yeah guys, welcome back to a brand new episode. Um, in this video, I will talk about the importance of buying music. Now, this is going to be another rant for today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. I've been seeing some things on social media in regards to people actually wanting artists to do well, artists to sell their music, and to have successful music careers, period. Not only that, they should have longevity, period, because especially the artists that have that passion, that work ethic, that ambition, and that creativity to do music forever and you know have the ability to have that gift and use it to touch people's lives that's all that matters now from what i'm seeing like i said um in terms of people buying music especially buying cds nowadays um it's really important to this day and i think that i think the issue is now it's also the influence on social media and in the media but I've noticed people on Twitter, they have been having this debate going back and forth about, you know, fans actually buying the music, which I do agree, because buying the music will help, you know, artists get more exposure. Um, it will also help artists get more recognition um, for people who may not be familiar with their music, who aren't fans from day one, but they have you know grown to start listening to their music and they took the time to listen to their music they count as well now fans like I said in my last you know videos I have been talking about how it's very frustrating this day and age that people aren't really excited supporting like music supporting artists because like I said it's just like a lot of this you know going on with this new age of music the direction of music the shift in music you know music right now is different which is fine it's cool it's progressing which that's why i love it but also i think that it's not as thrilling as it was before like to where the era that i grew up with now i was born in like what 1992 so i grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s so back in the day you know, people were buying music, people were buying CDs, you know, fans really, really invested, like, their, you know, respect and, you know, their desire to support their favorite artists, go buy their music, you know, and people really were so excited. When a CD came out from their favorite artists, people, they were so ready to rush to the stores and, you know, like I said, you know, buy or purchase a copy of a CD or more than one copy. And really, like I said, you know, since things have changed from when 106 and Park used to be out and TRL and Soul Train, because those huge music platforms, you know, they promoted these talented artists from different walks of life. And really the music was the main essence and the main focus. Whereas now today, you got these fans. I don't know what the hell's been going on, but these fans got this like narcissist mentality where it's like, they also don't have a lot of like I would say loyalty or just be aware of like the importance of supporting your favorite artist through thick and thin making sure that you save up and buy the album so by the time the artist release his or her album or their album then you can go and buy the album from the store from your favorite you know store local store that sells CDs and albums so like I said, you know, you got to do what to do. But I've seen on Twitter, what I don't like is you got some of these fans. And really, they're not really fans, but you got the fans, the trolls, and even, you know, biased critics where they say that they always talk about, like, number one hit records, number one albums, like how many albums, you know, an artist is selling and, you know, just all of that stuff is good but they also use album sales and popularity to bash and put down artists that are underrated 
and here's my thing guys at the end of the day i know and not everybody is your cup of tea but at the end of the day you don't know what goes on behind the scenes of the music business and that's why i get concerned for like i said some of these artists because really it's like this you really want to have longevity and really some artists they end up becoming one hit wonders which there's nothing wrong with being a one hit wonder and i'm not putting down anybody who's a one hit wonder but there are some one hit wonders from different eras of like the early 2000s the 90s the 80s the 70s and 60s where it was like they had to really keep up with like the times and the trends in music and also like i said they had a couple of hits they put out a few albums but after a while we haven't heard from them anymore you know and i'm not putting them down because i swear you know i think the music business of course it is grueling it's very treacherous you have to really stand your ground and you really have to hold on and don't let it mess you up and don't let it mess with your integrity your work ethic your creativity because listen even the successful music artists that we have heard like over the years and they're still relevant today they went through the same thing it was very challenging for them because of the stigma you know like i said discrimination misogynist all that crazy stuff and they had to really like keep pushing and never give up on their dreams because music is a part of their life music is their passion especially when you're a passionate person you're going to deal with hardships but when you have that much passion and work ethic and you have that will and that drive to keep going that's when like you can achieve anything you are resilient and there are a lot of resilient artists that really like i said they had really pushed through you know they really like had to fight for their art and fight for their integrity and not sell themselves or sell their souls just to make good music just to have longevity but it takes a long time and it takes patience and patience is the key to success so for an artist that is in love with music he or she or they you know an artist that really put in the work they put into the time and the craft and the patience and essence to really make things happen it takes a couple of years you know and really what i'm saying right now i don't like what i'm saying so it's a rant i don't like what i'm saying because some of these fans they have this mentality where it's like regardless how they feel by the direction or the creativity of an artist like um direction in their music it's like instead of the fans just supporting and be grateful and appreciate the artist it's almost like they are always trying to doubt that artist or they try to diminish or try to discredit what that artist has done so far and really it pisses me off because some artists i have supported since day one i have all their albums i have went to see them in concert and y'all already know how i roll so y'all already know me by now but it's very sad and it just takes a lot of it, it's like a slap in the face because these people they sacrifice their lives to do what they do this is not a walk in the park this is not success doesn't come overnight it takes years and also you really have to look at the bigger picture you can't just be like well yeah i'm a fan of this artist but they need to hurry out and put out something or i'll lose interest i mean now in reality it is boring and it is like pretty much a desert a drying desert with no water no nothing but you can also in the meantime listen to other artists and also you can listen to other artists and you can be fans of them as well and still be fans of the artists that you've been you know supporting too like you don't have to like just have one fave but that's just a different story but what i'm saying is that if you love music and you love listening to music and music really helps you heal and it's your therapy then you should buy the music because that's the only way for these artists to really get further in their careers as well because they should be able to feel some sort of gratitude some sort of appreciation that their fans really are rotted eyes they have 
really went out their way to support and buy the music but see what I'm saying is and I've said this and I said especially people that haven't supported or even bought some of these artists music but then want to turn around and say and talk out there behind about well this artist you know lost my interest because this artist didn't re reinvent him or herself or their selves and I'm like okay that's your opinion but I disagree just because an artist okay first of all if you haven't supported an artist and you say that that's your opinion but you are being biased because really you haven't even taken the time to even listen to their music or or like I say you have taken the time to listen to their music but you just write them off because of the stand culture which I'll get into that later on this is gonna be a long video so really enjoy this my thing is an artist that is underrated especially artists that have been underrated for years and now they're getting the recognition they're getting flowers where it's due whereas like before even some of them they have had hit singles they've had hit records um but as time went on you know when they got to a couple albums in their music career they have went through some things they went through label issues they went through like you know people not believing in their vision you know um they're not seeing eye to eye in their vision and their creative process their creativity as artists they're not really it's like they're dealing with a whole lot of shit and you don't know it takes a lot of that stuff it's mentally draining physically draining and it's mentally pretty much it's like it's frustrating so that's why I know this because like I said as a fan I have been there for my favorite artists through thick and thin my mentality is always as a go-getter and as a hustler buying music I said I look forward hearing this new album I look forward hearing this new project I look forward buying this album I look forward listening to new music period all I care about was the music and I think it's very sad that I don't know it's like really it's kind of like if you don't appreciate things that's sad but unfortunately some fans some artists they lose their fans along the way they lose their fans along you know on the journey which is fine but the same people that always be complaining about artists not getting enough support artists are not being recognized well listen if y'all not buying the music and not and y'all not being consistent and i'm tell you something you have to stay consistent you have to buy the music you got to support if you have itunes or whatever you got support them and also please buy the CD because I buy CDs and I have a whole bunch of CDs in my com my collection and it's like really buying a CD is worth buying a CD especially of an artist that you like and that you have you know you're a fan you're really a huge fan so my thing is you know you should save up and buy a CD you know yeah you can buy a CD on iTunes you know yeah you could download it like I said some people some people do download albums I mean like I said you know that's them that's fine but buying a CD it don't really cost a lot of money I mean they're high nowadays but it depends but some like I said, sometimes in the stores they have them like for sale for like $7.99 um, $10.99 $9.99 so that's pretty much the CD price range that you're gonna buy for an album but it's like really people need to buy the music because see if you don't buy the music what's gonna happen is these artists gonna keep making music the ones that have a passion which they should never give up period I don't care you have a passion making music you love making music don't give up period don't sell yourself short because the fans are going to support you they're going to support you and and that's all that matters I've seen it because real fans they do go out and they do support and the fans that buy the albums go to concerts you know all the above those are the fans that are worth keeping those are the fans that will keep an artist flourishing throughout the years 
because artists will gain more fans throughout the years so my thing is which is really sad because I do see a lot of really cool like talented like real talented artists right now you know they are successful right now they've been putting in work they've been hustling and they have that artistic creative freedom and they have a lot of like that you know they have a really good music you know good music ear what they do but now it's like I think like I said some of them they put out some albums they've been doing well and even though their album sales are not as like you know big because like I said this is a different day and age day and age like I said people aren't like really buying CDs as much but see back in the day my era you know I grew up in the era of the early 2000s and 1990s people bought albums people bought CDs I know some artists they sold like 1 million first week sales like units alone you know um, people sold like about maybe 100k 200k 300k first week sales and their albums went like what number one for a couple of weeks I mean really music was really booming at a time and people really were investing behind the music and artists were very successful they were able to get like you know hit singles platinum records you know platinum albums uh, gold albums and all that good good stuff diamond platinums I think yeah diamond platinum all that good stuff because the certifications of like the album in sales and units you know on a single on an album I mean really artists really thrived this happened back in the early 2000s 1990s 1980s and 1970s and 1960s I mean you know throughout you know from the past decades but see now since we're in a different time period of the progression of music it can happen again the same thing can happen but the two factors which I think are the issue is social media and stand culture. Now let me get right into it. Social media. When I see these trolls on social media talking about this art is a flop. This art is a flop because this artist isn't selling as much. Well this artist is not popular. Well this artist really don't have anything to offer because this artist's music is not what that I like okay fine okay but really the thing is if you have this mindset of like music just only being one thing one direction you're used to listen to the same old same old over and over then you're missing out a lot because the like music is supposed to evolve and progress and artists have the right to experiment with their music they have the right to experiment with their sound they have the right to grow as artists be creative get into the creative zone and also you have to be patient which is another reason why that I feel like I, I get concerned with some of these artists because I know that they have to put in the work they have to be creative they want to be able to have a lane for themselves and fulfill their artistry they really want to be able to stand out amongst their peers and they want to connect with the fans but also fans, you gotta work with these people. You can't be on social media 24-7 demanding music. I want music right now. I need this single right now. I want this single right now. No, no, no. It don't work like that. They have a schedule. They have a time, like their team, their label, even if they're signed to a label or not. They have a time and a schedule when to make the music, which is the process. They have to have a time, space, and schedule for that. They got to hit the recording studios. They got to be writing. They got to be producing. Um, working with producers. You know, like, I'm talking about good people, the right people, you know, networking. Working with producers. Like, have an idea to formulate a sound, create a sound. You know, and don't be afraid to be creative. Have the innovation. And, you know, let the music speak for itself. Then, at that, during that process, they got to figure out, okay, they, they, they got to know the direction of the song, right? Then, the direction of like the, the album was how is it going to sound? How is the, the album going to be cohesive? The build up, you know, the rhythm, you know, tracks, like album tracks and album songs to really like build up. Like, okay, how many tracks are going to be on this album, okay? Or how many tracks is going to be on this EP, this mixtape? So, it has to be cohesive. 
so really that gives them the time and space to know okay these tracks are like pretty standout tracks for this project then they got to figure out the schedule when to release a single when they're going to release a single the year the month the day the time they got to know because I'm telling you you can't just be thinking that these artists can just drop music here and there like it's nothing I mean some artists can I mean depending on who they are but still like I said they have to be able to make sure to promote and make sure that they you know really set the schedule and execute when it drop the single and then by the time they drop the single boom the single drops the fans got to purchase a single buy the single promote the single also the artist is supposed to promote the single by doing live performances uh, radio interviews and all that great stuff and then drop some more singles do the same thing and then let the fans know okay yo my album has an official album release date the month the year and the day boom there you go and really it's so sad because some of these album campaigns nowadays it's really it's really not thrilling as it was back in the day because really like back in the day artists basically had like a time to schedule you know they were very very quiet about like you know the direction of the album you know especially when he was talking about the album the music the interviews they were pretty much saying okay yo I don't want to speak on the album too much but here's bits and pieces of what the album is going to be you know be very specific and then fans have that imagination have that idea oh, okay this album will be this way this album will be pretty much what this artist is saying and like I said you have to have an open mind to listening to different sounds and don't get stuck into listening to just one genre of music because that's and that's the whole and see that's what really pissed me off because I'm like really music you can't label music as one thing and then it's like this is the reason why back then especially me listening to like my favorite artists from the early 2000s and 1990s because those were the eras that i grew up with like listening to like real good music in the other eras where it was like artists were able to be so creative so free it, they wasn't put into a box they wasn't forced into a box unfortunately some artists did deal with that with the label issues where it was like label issues of like you know not being able to express themselves creatively and freely and they had to fight for their art and they had to say listen this is who I am I'm not I'm not this kind of artist in terms of like I'm not going to do just one or two genres of music and that's that I'm more than that and that's a great thing and then the artists that had that creative freedom and control music they were really able to make good music good bodies of works I mean I gotta be honest my favorite albums huh my favorite albums would be Brandy Full Moon um Mariah Carey The Mansion Emancipation of Mimi and Mariah Carey a uh, butterfly um gosh Tony Braxton um, her debut album uh, this is album called Heat it was some other albums too um, I would say um, Aaliyah One in a Million the self titled album Aaliyah Michael Jackson off the wall album I love that album um, he, uh, gosh Michael um, Bad, Thriller, Jan Jackson, uh, Rhythm Nation, The Velvet Rope, Jan self titled album, um, also uh, her Unbreakable album that she had put out a few years ago. Um, what else? Who else? Gosh. Prince's album, Purple Rain, 
um, I can't remember other Prince's album top of my um, head, but yeah, um, Sierra, self titled goodies, the goodies album and the self titled album Sierra and the evolution, um, and also beauty marks, um, oh boy, J. Cole. Self-titled album, um, the sideline story, Born Center, mm, Forest Hills Drive, 2014. Gosh, that was a man. Good music. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid in Mad City. <sighs> What's the name of Ken K Dot's album? I'm a huge K Dot fan. Hold on, I know what it is. Oh my gosh, it's something, something that says butterfly in it, but you know, y'all know, and damn album, the damn album, um, yeah, like good cohesive albums, and it's rare, it's rare, um, yeah, so that's just a you know a list of albums that in my book like really like cohesive albums by good bodies of work, um, just like everything. But nowadays it's like you know these music fans are really demanding too much, and I think that it just needs to get back to a time where it's a balance. You know when fans were really patient because they knew at the time of music where it was like okay. You know, pre going to get an album like maybe every two years from an artist. So really, it takes a lot of work and a lot of like, you know, dedication and patience. And then also, albums that I'm looking forward to for this year. Brandy's new album, her seventh album. Um, I'm looking for, now next year. Normani Corday's self-titled titled album, June's Diary self-titled album. I'm just looking forward for like good music. Um, I know Elvon, she's coming out with like some new music. I know her sophomore album because she did release her um, EP called Elevation. Go check that out. Um, Sis's album that came out what like in 2017. Control that came out, Ari Lennox, um, Shea Butter Baby, um, Lizzo because I love you, yeah. So, yeah, the list goes on because really, I really like took the time to listen to like new music, you know, have a good feel of listening to like these artists in a direction, a creative direction, and just being themselves and being authentic with their sound. One thing I do respect about artists that they're really authentic with their sound. It'll be more of them. Because more who have studied and been influenced by other artists, which is cool too, but they take control of like their art and they don't care about like trying to fit in with mainstream radio or they don't and, and, and also they don't care about that. They have a passion for making good music. Which is that's why the art has been lost. Where when I listen to music on the radio it's not thrilling as it used to be. It's not thrilling like, oh, let me talk about TLC. Yes, TLC. I can't miss them. TLC, Crazy Sexy Cool was one of their best albums. Fan Mail was one of their best, is one of their best albums, not was, is. So they are really one of their best albums. Um, their self-titled album, I can't think of the name. Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child, uh... Their debut album, Writings on the Wall, um, gosh, Survivor, um, Destiny Fulfilled, you know, like, those are real good albums, Usher, Confessions, um, this other album, 8712, whatever, the, I, I, I know the, oh, the name and letters, but you know that one with Usher doing his Michael Jackson influence, that album cover, so yeah. But, yeah, it's a lot of albums, a lot of artists, like, that I grew up with. I mean, it's 
especially the ones that really had that gift and talent and I see the same thing happening today and that's a great thing but I'm also concerned about like I said them having the ability the ability to have that longevity because really it's like this in this day and age and climbing the music it's like one thing I've, I've noticed that a lot of people are just some people some music fans and critics they just focus on like the popularity you know they're focused on like so much of the popularity you gotta make chart records you gotta make hit records that's cool there's nothing wrong with making hood hit, I'm sorry hit records excuse me there's nothing wrong with making hit records but you want to make quality hit records and you want to make records that have like that off that thrill that kick something that is unique and different something that is innovative and even set trends <laughs> that's what artists did back in the day oh yeah I can't see every time I be going back in the day like in the early 2000s oh my goodness I cannot leave out Anne Marie Anne Marie is an underrated artist too listen to her debut album all I have um her second album touch her third album because I love it. Um, her fourth album in Love and War. And Amory is another artist. I need to do a um, the artist diaries on Amory's because Amory, perfect example. She's an artist that people they don't give her enough credit because Amory's production, the way how Amory had like her, you know, like the own her own signature sound. You know, she was just so nostalgic and she's really underrated as a an artist, a singer, a songwriter, you know, and she really had good stage presence too. She could dance too, but see a lot of that stuff and the music business shadiness and all that. Amory Amory's popularity did decline, but everybody still to this day they talk about Amory. They I mean people who grew up with her and it was like, damn, you know, Amory pretty much she should have been bigger. Which I do agree. Which I will do um, the artist diaries and I will do that because Amory she need to get her flowers where it's due because Amory she always puts out good music and recently I think last year she did put out she did put out um, some new projects I did promote them on my um, YouTube channel go check it out I know it's called 4 a.m. Mulan Mulholland series so it's a lot but Amory basically pretty much is one of those underrated artists that she pretty much like people shouldn't overlook her but I will do an artist diaries so I'll do that so I'll make a note because yeah man I mean a lot of music like good music was being created and it's like a lot of the artists from like those eras up until now because I know the year is 2019 where like I said now the trap and R&B sound is dominating which is a good thing and a bad thing because the oversaturation of the trap and R&B, I feel like new sounds can be incorporated into that and everybody sounds the same. Everybody's doing the same old mumble rap trap and I'm like, I want to hear more than just mumbling. I want to hear some lyricism. I want to hear some singing, some singing. I want to hear a really, you know, like rapper singing, like on the hook, like Nate Dogg, rest in peace with Nate Dogg because I love Nate Dogg. Especially like that you can really really like hear that it's kind of like this is what's been missing in music it's just like that creativity and innovation is boring as hell and it is boring as hell because really all I'm hearing is like the generic pop sound which the generic pop sound like you know it's typical you know ch um, hit chasing record and then the generic um you know even the generic um what you call it the trap R&B sound it's like artists are pretty much doing the generic of the R&B sound trap sound or the generic pop sound trap sound sound and whatever the hell that is and really it's just it's just the same old same old is bland there's just nothing new there's nothing refreshing and then even search for artists or support artists that have that authentic sound 
people must support them and even like I said you know there's this comment from my subscriber follower um you know and other people too they say listen we gotta step up to the plate we gotta support these artists we really do because what's gonna happen is if we don't support them then who else is gonna support them we can't just not support them and we say we love their music and really it's so sad because this popularity contest and I know some artists that have really they struggled throughout the years to really have their own lane and fight their art and just have their own creativity in their music and represent what they put in the table with their music and sound and I think that really things will be a lot better and a lot different if people really invest in just buying the music and also the stand culture it's really sad that these stands nowadays in my last video I did do um, are you a fan stand or troll go check that video out and I think that the stand culture is another thing because it's like fans will stand well stands can't just support the music y'all you know, can't support the goddamn music but y'all always worrying about an artist that you claim that you don't like an artist that you claim is a flop you always worry about their every move and you always say stuff like well, you know, this artist don't have this and that. I'm like, okay, fine. But I'm telling you, some of these mainstream artists, I'm not going to mention no names. Their music is whack. Their music is shit. Okay? Seriously. Like, some of their music ain't really hitting on nothing. It's the same old, same old, like, sound. It's the same old production. It just, it needs some seasoning and it needs some flavor. I need rhythm, I need movement, I need beat, I need groove. I need more than just one redundant sound throughout the whole damn entire song. And then, another thing. This mumbling, trap, rap stuff, I don't even know and I can't hear what these rappers are saying. I also like the rappers to have like lyricism, more like, you know, experience in life. And being able to just have fun with their music too, because there's nothing wrong with that. They can, like I said, have fun with their music too, but it's really rare that artists they have that versatile, they have that versatility, that they're not afraid to push the barriers of music, and they don't care how how music how it sounds, as long a as long as a record feels good and sounds good whatever how you create it because I know artists that are really like on the A game with the producing thing the recording engineer is really rare and they are self taught and they're able to you know have their own voice be heard because I know like the real good producers like Missy Elliott Timbaland Dr. Dre Pharrell Williams AKA Pharrell, you and we know Pharrell and the Neptunes, um, Scott Storch, Rodney, Dark Child Jergens, um, gosh, whew. It's a whole bunch of them, and it's so crazy because I'm telling you, like, producers, there are more producers like that, and they have, like, that passion and driving that real good musical ear and that creativity where they're not stuck in one lane they're not stuck in one box they're all like really like, like really really dope so it's really cool that it's almost like you know it's the real deal and I really think that like I said you know you gotta respect the artist you have to buy the music oh let me read this quote respect the artist buy the music problem people are willing to pay five dollars for a cup of coffee that costs pennies to make takes minutes to prepare is gone forever after one use yet millions of people won't pay one dollar for a song they like that costs thousands to record can be used for over and over again took years of pra practice to create I think it says practice and last a lifetime that's damn right because it takes years you know to create songs you know um write songs 
you know and i'm telling you y'all some of these some of these fans i don't know where what of what planet do they live but it's a planet of like delusional because music costs money but the people behind the music they put in the work they put in lots of work and really was so sad too and it really concerns me because it's like I don't want any of these artists to feel like their music isn't good enough because I know that you know when it comes to your art you're sensitive and it's okay but like I said as long as you like it and you love what you do just to keep doing what you're doing um the fans that rock with you they ride on out with you ride or die fans those are the ones that matter the fans matter the ones that do matter period capitalization d o period also you know i know music is, is subjective and i know people have their opinions on who they support and who they don't support so it's all good you know but as long as you love your stuff and you know you putting out stuff that you want to create and it's authentic and it comes from the heart nine times out of ten you keep going you have that longevity slay that's all you got to do hell the greats they've been through it they know what it's like people try to kick them down people try to put them down say they won't make any music say they should do something else they didn't give up real life shit successful stories and i tell you what majority of them are the ones that i've supported throughout all the years period because i'm a real fan period so i know what's up period so yeah um that's all i gotta say so yeah guys just buy the music you know god we gotta do better so yeah i think that this wraps up my rant video of like i said buying the music um like i said i hope that my followers and subscribers they enjoy this video and let me know down below and please comment please like share comment subscribe down below don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button don't be afraid to hit that notification bell i need to interact with my followers and my subscribers so yeah i see what's going on so yeah so as always stay tuned to the next episode of get since night 2 dragon ball z narrative reference and this super saiyan is out y'all peace bye bye